Okay, in today's video, 10, maybe 12 minutes or less, I'm to go, going to go over almost everything you need to know about work. One thing you definitely need to know about work is that work is a scalar quantity. It is defined only by its magnitude. It is not a vector quantity, which would be defined by its magnitude and a direction. Work is a scalar quantity magnitude only. <clears throat> also, when we talk about work, we have to specify which force is working on which object. So we would have to say, for example, the force, how much work does the force of friction do on an object as it moves across a horizontal surface? Or how much work does the force of gravity do as an object moves towards the Earth's surface? We have to specify the force and the object upon which that force is working. Here is our definition of work, textbook definition. Work is the product of the magnitude of the displacement. That means the distance, how far the object moves, the distance and the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement. What does that mean, the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement? In a moment or two, or maybe a minute or two, I'm going to do a couple examples and I'll show you what we mean by the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement because sometimes not all of the force is parallel to the displacement. But when you do work in physics, you need two things. One is you need a force. The other is you need a distance. That means that you need to have a force and that force has to be applied over a distance. That is the most common 8th, ninth grade definition of work. It is a force that is applied over a distance. If you have a force but the object doesn't move, you do no work. And I'll show you some examples of that. Now, this is the equation we use for work. Fd, the force times the distance. Fd, the force times the distance times the cosine of theta. What is theta, you might be asking yourself. Theta is the angle between the displacement of the object and the force that is being applied to the object. And once again, in a couple minutes, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Now, when we abbreviate the definition, we just say Fd cosine theta. F force D distance times the cosine of theta. Theta being the angle between the displacement, the direction the object is moving, and the force that's being applied to the object. The units for work, well, force is newtons, Distance is meters. It's the Newton meter, which we abbreviate as the joule, J-O-U-L-E, capital J, abbreviated for joule. James Prescott, joule, thank you very much. Work and energy are both measured in joules. Now, here is example number one. This is a particular example because we have a sled that is moving across a horizontal surface a distance of 50 meters, and a horizontal force is being applied to that object. So we're going to draw, this box is obviously the sled, this is the horizontal, it says right here, horizontal force, 125 newtons, and the object is moving across a horizontal surface. It doesn't say that, but we'll assume that that is the case, which I think we can do pretty easily, 50 meters. Now, we're going to write down our equation. We we'll always write down the equation first. Work, force, distance, cosine of theta. The force we were given, the distance we were given. But what is theta? That is so interesting. What could theta be? Well, you will notice that this force and this displacement are parallel to each other and, not or, and in the same direction. And you can see... I will bring them closer together like that. You can see they're parallel and they're in the same direction. And what is the angle between those two lines? Math class, what is the angle between those two lines? Well, the angle between those two lines is zero degrees. Theta in this case is zero degrees. When the object is moving in one direction and the force is plied in the same direction and they're parallel to each other, then theta is zero degrees. And you can see that And the cosine of zero is one. Maybe you know that from trig. Or maybe you have a calculator and you can just put in there cosine 
zero degrees equals one. Okay, now that means that we're going to take the force times the distance times the cosine of zero degrees and the cosine of zero degrees is one, so it's 125 times 50 times one, it gives us 6,250. That means when you apply a force of 50 newtons, oh, excuse me, 125 newtons over a distance of 50 meters, it doesn't matter what you're pulling or pushing, you do 6,250 joules of work. In this case, the force and the displacement were horizontal to each other, and that is not always the case. As you can see here, we have the same situation, the same distance, 50 newtons, and we have the same force that is being applied to this object. We'll say it could be the sled also, because you know when you pull your little brother behind the sled, you don't pull horizontally, you pull up at an angle, 125 newtons. You'll notice that that force is at some angle above the horizontal, the dashed line being that horizontal. This is the angle. Well, what is that angle? In this case, it's 30 degrees. Now, that means that not all of that 125 newtons of applied force is parallel to the displacement. So we need to figure out what component of that 125 newtons is parallel to the displacement. And the way we do that is we're going to decompose that vector. You'll notice this should look like now that we have a right triangle here, and this is the hypotenuse. That is the x component of the force. That is the y component. Well, we're only interested in the component that's parallel to the displacement. So we don't need the y components. We're just going to get rid of that. To figure out the x component, all we do is we take the applied force and we, met, we multiply it times the cosine of theta. If you remember trig, this is the adjacent side. And the cosine uses the adjacent, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We're going to solve for the adjacent side. And that means we do that by taking the force and multiplying it times the cosine of theta. Okay, so now we have everything we need. Here is our equation, Fd cosine theta. Now here you can see I wrote it like this. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in. It's not usually written like this, but this is the force, and when we multiply it by the cosine of theta, we get the component of the force that's parallel to the, to the displacement, and, and then this is the distance that the object moves. Remember the magnitude of the displacement is just the distance. Now usually we write it like this, Fd cosine theta, and the cosine theta gives us the component of the force, once again, that is parallel to the displacement. Okay, so we just plug everything in, and you'll find out that you actually do less work in this case because not all of that 125 newtons is being applied parallel to the displacement, so it's just 637.5 joules of work. So the first case, the force and the displacement were parallel. In this case, the force was applied at some angle above the horizon. Now, this is a similar case, except being pulled, you're pushing. Now, in both cases, we had no friction. But you'll notice it doesn't matter whether you push or pull, the same force, same distance, same angle, and you do the same amount of work. I just wanted to specify that and show you that. Okay, whether you push or pull, you do the same amount of work. Now, when you have friction, it's not quite that simple. But in this case, there was no friction. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I want to go over a couple examples of where you think you might be doing work, but you're not actually doing work. Now, this is the first one. We have an object here, this car, and it's stuck. And this guy is pushing on the car, and we want to know how much work is he doing on the car. You can see he's pushing the car, but it's not moving. Now, remember, work is Fd cosine theta. It's not moving, but he is applying a force. That force happens to be 200 newtons, but unfortunately, the object is not moving. So he's thinking to himself, hmm, my physics teacher said, if I work hard, I will be successful in life. Well, let's see how much work is he doing when he applies a force of 200 newtons on an object that is not moving. So we said it's Fd cosine theta. So that means that the force is 200 newtons, but the object is not moving. So there's really no angle, but we know the object is not moving. So that's zero. So 200 times zero is still, let me just check that on my calculator. 200 times zero is zero. So when you push or pull an object and the object does not move, you may get tired. You may think to yourself, I'm doing a lot of work. You may think to yourself, this is a lot of work. But in physics class, you are doing no work. 
Now, let's meet this guy. He's got this big book. I think that's Russian, and I think maybe it says Moscow on it. I don't know. But he, we, he, we want to know how much work is he doing on the book. He's just holding this thing in his hands. It's not moving. He's not raising it. He's not lowering it. It's not moving. He's not moving. And there's the force of gravity, and he applies an equal and opposite force as he holds it there. And he's probably thinking to himself, man, that is heavy because the force of gravity is 50 newtons, which means he has to apply an equal and opposite force. And he's thinking, man, this book is heavy. Just holding it like this is a lot of work. Well, how much work is he doing given the fact that the object is not moving? Let's check. Fd cosine theta. The force is 50 newtons. The distance, once again, is zero. There's no angle because it's not moving. So 50 times zero, if I remember, um, 200 times zero was zero, so maybe 50 times zero is also zero. So he does no work. Even if he walks forward on a horizontal surface and holds the book like that in his hands, he's not doing any work, okay? So whether he holds it there or he moves across a horizontal surface at a constant velocity, he is doing no work on that book. Now the last example, now this one's a little tricky, this is a good AP physics question. We have Earth here and the force of Earth's gravity on the moon and the moon is obviously going around the Earth and this is the velocity vector for the um, moon's motion and we want to know how much work is the force of gravity or Earth's gravitational force doing on the moon as the moon goes around Earth. Well let's see. Our equation was Fd cosine theta. Now, what is the angle? Okay, the object is moving, but the angle in here is 90 degrees. The force and the displacement, the force and that angle are at 90 degrees to each other. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? Well, if you know in your head, if you can look it up, if you have your calculator, you'll remember that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Okay, so let's plug our numbers in. Now, I don't know what the force is between the Earth and the Moon. You can figure it out pretty easily. Look it up. But, you know, some number of Newtons. We could say as the Earth move, as the Moon moves, you know, 200 miles. I don't know. We didn't specify what the distance is. But the cosine of theta, as we said earlier, is zero. That means that regardless of the force, regardless of the distance, the cosine is zero. So we multiply all those together times zero, and you still get zero. Now, what that means, really, is that there is a gravitational force, but no component of that force is acting parallel to the displacement. Okay, so I'm not saying there's no gravitational force. I'm just saying the gravitational force is not doing any work. Okay? All right, so that's it. We did the definition of work. We went over the units. We went over an example where the force and the displacement were parallel. We went over an example where the force and the displacement were not parallel. And we talked about places or situations where you think you're doing work, but you're not really doing any work. Okay? I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or give me a nice comment in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.